You guys have been asking for it, and I'm going to deliver. We've got more bizarre gameplay. I will go through the entire game, look at what we can see, and just go through the motions with uh, with a stealth game from October 2022. If you can believe that's how long it's been since we've seen it. So there's a lot that's going to have changed, but there's a lot that may stay the same. Let's jump into the game. But my mother said I'm the best. So we jump into our stell game here. Uh, so just quickly recapping on some of the things we may have missed, although we've already bought a battle drone. Uh, what do you do there, battle drone? Uh, it is a weapon vehicle drone every seven seconds, deals 15 damage. When you take off this item's cooldown, if this item's cooldown is greater than three seconds, reduce it by one, uh, which we now know it's not called advance, is it? It's called charge, charge by one. Um, so I guess I need to explain style real quick. The way style, I'm going to say used to work, I can't imagine it's been this long, she's not changed at all. She used to have a, a stat called Altitude. It's similar to Strength, similar to Regen. It would appear to the bottom left of the, pro, the uh, profile picture. You'll see it as this game goes on. Um, and that's just like an extra, extra unique uh, sort of mechanic, a unique resource that Stell has. Um, and a lot of her items will interact with it. So there will be plenty of cards that give her Altitude, gains Altitude. Uh, so then it will go up. And there are some that would remove our two, so the number will go down. There are some extra little things that are involved in that. For example, if you go from having no altitude to one or more, i.e. going from zero to a positive number, then you take off. As in, assuming that like Stella's on the ground, she gains altitude, which means she's no longer on the ground. She's up in the air, she's taken off. Uh, so there are a bunch of take off triggers, uh, and there are also a bunch of landing triggers when you go from having positive altitude to having no altitude. So. That's something to look out for, which means in the case of the battle drone, uh, every, not even at every every seven seconds, as a passive, if he would gain altitude in this style build, and this item still had more than three seconds left on its cooldown, it would charge by one second, um, which is okay. Again, it's gonna need a lot of work, but I mean, it's a solid damage item. At the very least, it's 15 damage every seven seconds. So here we go into our first choice of encounters. We have two NPCs to battle and one merchant option. Uh, I can't remember if this patch was uh, had really, really strong um, NPC battles. Uh, I can't remember if it was one of the like broken patches where battling NPCs is basically always the right choice. Um, hopefully they fixed the balance of like encounter versus battle for the actual bazaar. Um, they seem to be doing a lot more interesting things with them now. Because uh, back here you can see they just give gold, whereas in the current version there's like three little things underneath it. There is gold, XP, and then I think a symbol of like how many items you get from the, the thing you fight. So there's lots of things you get from them. Uh, here we're looking through a couple of items. We go with the makeshift barricade. I will as much as possible try to pause and look at the items he picks up and explain maybe why he went for that item. Um, so you're going to have to bear with me as I rewind a couple of times. So, here we go. Make sure barricade. This is what we pick. Every 10 seconds, gain 10 shielding. And when you get this, gain plus 10 armor permanently, which we should see appear in the bottom left when he buys it. Yeah, there we go. Got a little pen down there. I uh, even hovers it here. Uh, we then go to Nufu, who's going to sell us a skill. Uh, we have four slots for skills. It looks like there's a default placeholder, so we should already have a skill. I don't know what that does. He hasn't hovered it yet. Uh, but our options here are Storm's Fury, which during the Sandstorm, your weapons deal double damage. That's a fun one. Uh, running Hot, when you use a vehicle in your rightmost slot, burn the opponent equal to the day count. Interesting. I mean, we have a vehicle. And then Live Fast, when you gain speed, heal five health. Also interesting. Because if I remember rightly, Stell has quite a bit of access to speed, too. Um, I quite like all of these. These all sound quite fun. Running Hot doesn't sound very good early, because you're only doing... Like, it's day one, so you're doing one burn. But he goes with it anyway. I assume it scales pretty well. Like, you, like you also have to have a vehicle in your rightmost slot. Alright, so we're going to fight the tiny furry creature. I think this is one of those... Um, Encounters. There are a lot of a bunch of NPC encounters that have this sort of like evolving story. Uh, and if you fight the tiny furry creature, 
I think you might have to fight it multiple times during your run. Uh, the sort of the big mama bear or papa bear or dog or whatever it is uh, comes to fight you later on. Um, and you, you can only get those like unique uh, encounters if you progress a certain way through the bazaar. Um, and it's all these tiny little niche bits of information that we're going to need uh, when we're playing bazaar ourselves to get the most out of it. So it's going to be a, a massive knowledge gain. Uh, but also, you know, it, it's going to feel, if you're just playing it for fun, if you're just enjoying going through the bazaar, uh, then it's going to feel a lot more immersive because things will actually change based on the choices you make. I uh, don't think this crab is going to have too much of a good time against us. Yeah, there we go. Battle Shrine finishes it off. Uh, I believe in this build as well. Damage was permanent. Yeah, so we've still got 21 out of 100 health after having fight, fought a bunch of those creatures. Uh, so we've got two more NPCs to fight or a merchant. I assume we're going to the merchant because we've only got 21 health and we don't want to die. Also, back in these days, we have the heart mechanic. Now, now we have the, the little bar thing that goes down instead. Um, it's, it's a similar like progression to the life system that we see. I mean, Super Auto Pets did it, right? They've now got like 20 hearts and you lose a different amount each time, each day. Uh, so we're selling an item and we're gaining either armor, buff medium, plus four damage for all medium weapons. So this guy buffs your weapons, buff random, plus eight damage for a random weapon. Genius. Sell your, sell your only other weapon, and then you guarantee get it on the battle drone. Then we go to Forger, and we pay one gold to fully heal. So the way that Forger worked in this patch is you would get, I believe, a random item, the ability to... Could you upgrade in this patch? I can't remember. The, the, the next one along will either upgrade or reroll. Then you have to buy healing, and then you have, I assume, the leave button. Uh, so we have a hang glider here. Uh, it costs two altitude, so you'll lose two altitude. And every five seconds, you gain eight health and eight shield. I wonder if you have zero altitude, if this will do anything. I assume not. I assume you would need altitude. We can afford it, but we can't put it on. We can't slot it anywhere. Uh, maybe he thinks about selling the, uh, the makeshift barricade, because it, does, it, it would help us with the taking off thing, right? Because it's going to reduce our altitude. So it's going to bring us back down to zero. Yeah, so he is going to buy it. Um, so he's going to, it's going to bring us back down to zero so that we can take off again uh, with our battle drone. The other other thing to mention right here uh, is that you could choose your opponent, right? So here we have three different ghosts. I can't remember if in this iteration, the most recent iteration we heard of this system, uh, picking between three different ghosts, was you would get an easy opponent, a hard opponent, and a normal opponent, and you would gain a different amount of trophies or, or MMR or whatever based on which one you chose. Um, this one also gives you a preview of what they have, skill-wise and health-wise. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't remember exactly in this system how uh, how it provided those options. Maybe they were three just balanced ones. Uh, I have a feeling that this is. Oh, I was gonna say I have a feeling this is a weak build, but the enemy only has twenty health left, so that's a free win day one. Crazy. Yep, and we get a bunch of trophies. Interestingly, that symbol used to be on the homepage. And in the latest versions of the homepage we have seen, we do not have that little trophy symbol. So I don't think we're going to be getting trophies. Maybe they've lent more into a sort of, not battle pass necessarily, but like a leveling type system, right? So, you know, you might win your game and you, let's say there are trophies in the actual game, right? You win, you win your run and you come back with a hundred trophies, right? I imagine that'll get applied to like player level or pass level or something. And that will give you chests to roll in. It will give you cosmetics. It'll give you whatever they're going to give for, for your interaction in the game. Um, because in this previous version, it looked almost like you would be storing your treasures and then you would go to some sort of shop and buy whatever you wanted from it. Um, but I would guess now that that's removed that we're going more to like a pass system, which is you know, what 99% of the world is doing these days anyway. Um, okay, so we are halfway through day two. 
we have a choice between once again two encounters or JJ. Uh, there were far fewer merchants in this build if I remember. Uh, and even then I don't recall all of them um, that we did see. JJ is a very general merchant, uh, or at least was. Well, we'll see if JJ still is. Um, which will sell you basically anything, apparently including this observatory. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but there are more specific merchants. So we saw the guy who looked like he was in like a lab coat kind of thing, who was like upgrading our weapons. And we've got Forger, who also upgrades stuff, and we see at the end of the days. There are very specific merchants and encounters that happen, but JJ, at least since uh, as far as I can remember, as long as I can remember, JJ's always been like the general merchant. Uh, and I think that's going to remain the case because we see JJ in the trailer, right? JJ is like this, to me at least, and I think to a lot of people, JJ is like a a symbol of the merchants of the bazaar. Um, he's sort of the, the OG, if you will. Um, so yeah, I expect JJ to be a general merchant. Regardless, you'll go to him and he will sell you something of anything, right? Uh, anyway, one of the things he sells to sell is the observatory, which is an appliance. Interesting, I probably would have gone with building, although I don't know if buildings existed back then, or property, or whatever it's called now for Pygmalion. This costs for altitude, like our um, glider. I was going to do the bleeding wing thing. Uh, it costs for altitude to days, to apply one days per large item your opponent owns, one freeze per medium, and one burn per small. That's quite nice because days and freeze you're going to want in smaller effects anyway. Uh, days slows the charging of items, freeze stops the charging of items, and burn does damage, right? Uh, but for burn to really work, you want to take quite a, quite a bit, of, bit of it, you know? Um, so if you go against a opponent with lots of small items, because if you have small items, you tend to have lots of small items, uh, or at least back in these days, you know, against Vanessa sort of thing, you know, the, old, the old Vanessa like revolver throwing knives, right? That would just want to stack as many small items as possible. Observatory, massive value against that. And then you've got your larger, like, I'm thinking the, the this was during the era of, like, Pygmalion luxury tents, right? Where he'd run, like, two large items and, like, a medium if you had space. Then you're getting massive value out of the dazing on those massive, uh, large, um, those large items. Because they're charging a lot slower and they're already slow to charge. And So I think Observatory is actually a very nicely rounded item. The, my only issue with Observatory is it has a wall of text on it. I don't know what the trade-off is between items like this that can work in any scenario. Like that it's sort of like counter items. Like it's 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 the kind of thing that we don't see much in the bazaar because the bazaar isn't a sort of 1v1 or even 1v8 or whatever. We, we have the infinite lobby system. So you never know who you're gonna fight. You never know what you need to be prepared for. Uh, outside of metas, obviously. Um, so items like this help with that because you'll be prepared for any enemy. But then, A, do you want your build to be re like re revolve around putting any enemy down? It's the whole point of the bazaar and this infinite lobby is that we can build our sandcastles. We can like enjoy doing what we're doing. Um, and then you've also got this wall of text. I... I don't know where I sit with it, but I like the implementation of it at the very least. Uh, and after all of that, he's not going to pick it, is he? Um, he, doesn't have the, he doesn't have the space for it regardless. He can afford it, but he'd have to get rid of his hang glider. Or his whatever it's called. Whereas he could pick up either of the other items. They're cheaper. They can fit on his board. We've seen the makeshift barricade. He's going for it. Mad lad. I mean, it does cost altitude, so it'll help with that. We go back to JJ again, we need something that gains altitude. So we have a blowtorch, which does four burn every six seconds. I love, I love simple items like that. We need simple items like that, to be fair. Uh, we have the Taurus Chariot, which is a vehicle every 12 seconds gives you 30 shield. Um, that looks uh, pretty funny. And then there was a spide there, uh, but I didn't hover it fast enough. It looked like it was doing poison though, yeah. One poison every 11 seconds, the trained spider. Uh, I don't know if he gets anything here. Maybe the blowtorch, because he already does some burning, right? Because he has burning hot. And like I said before, you want to stack burning up. Because one burning will do one damage. So the way the burning works, if you don't know. Uh, burning will deal damage equal to the 
number of the stack, so burning stacks in uh, value. So like if you add one burning to four burning, you get five burning. Um, that burning would then do five damage. And then as soon as that ticks and does that five damage, you lose one point of the burn. So you deal five damage and then you have four burning and then you do four damage and then you have three burning. Um, if you apply one burning five times, that'll deal five damage. If you apply five burning one time, that'll deal five, then four, then three, then two, then one. So you get much, much, much higher value out of stacking burning than consistently burning. Uh, which is why you want to stack burning items together. Well, you want to stack burning in general. Uh, we go to Nufu here, we're going to get another skill. Nufu, kind of like JJ, Nufu was like one of the other earliest, um, I guess, merchants we've seen. Although Nufu doesn't sell items. And uh, Nufu's never sold items. As far as I know, Nufu's always been a skill trader. Uh, and we got to see a little bit behind the scenes of Nufu recently. So um, we did a retrospective on that at, at the archive, so it's on the channel. Go watch it. If I remember, I'll link it in the card. But who knows if I remember that. Um, but yes, Nufu sells us skills. Uh, we have Burnout. First time any player is burned days for six seconds. Uh, that seems like a an easy pick, right? We've got two burning items, technically, uh, and days for six seconds. That sounds insane. Refueling. When you land, gives your items one ammo. We don't care about ammo. Uh, and then when you gain altitude, gain eight health above the clouds. Also don't care about that. I felt like it takes Burnout. Yeah, there we go. So we're transitioning into a bit of a burning style build. Interesting. Because he was looking for an altitude build, but I think he's going to end up with burning. And watch here, the observatory is going to apply a bunch of burning as well, because they have three small items. Okay, it would have, but they died already. Because we have so much burning and... Uh, we dazed them so they didn't get to do anything. There you go. The, the enemy has altitude, so you can see what altitude looks like. It's like the little uh, air balloon thing. Then we go see Forger. Oh, that's hard to say no to, surely. But you'd have to sell... I Honestly, I'd be happy to sell the observatory for that, but we don't do it. Yeah, I think this was the infinite reroll one. I think that claw in the middle rerolls. And during this version of the Bazaar, there was no upgrading of items. There's no way you want the bludgeon, surely. Yeah, okay, you take the reroll. We finally have a way of gaining altitude. Does he want to pivot back into an altitude-based build? All he'd have to do is sell the blowtorch by the birdcage. But I don't think he ever lands with the combination of that. Because that's every 8 seconds gain 4, and the observatory is every 9 seconds lose 4. So he'd, he'd land once. No, no, actually that would work out. Because he would he would land three times before Birdcage out ramps the observatory. It's like I can see him taking that. You would get the takeoff benefit three times. But I can't. Or the takeoff benefit for his vehicle, his drone, is just just a bit of charge, right? It's like charge one second if under three seconds or above three seconds even. So I don't know how worth it that is. We'll see. I, I liked the burn build he was going down. But obviously he still has a lot of it, right? That, the, the, the reason his burn build was so strong is he had this whole like burn into days combo. But he still has that. Because he's still got the two skills that give him burn and days. So he has two altitude right now. Now he has four altitude. And unfortunately it's going to not time out well so that when the observatory triggers... He lost all of his altitude, but his drone had just triggered anyway. That's unfortunate timing. It'll do it properly here. Maybe. I mean, it ends, so we don't get to see it. Yeah, okay, I think... So the timing of his observatory and his birdcage are good now. What isn't good is that when they trigger, his drone is under three seconds charge. I think. So it's just not triggering. I could be wrong, I could have missed it, but it looked like it was off balance. Oh yeah, beginning of every day, I think at the beginning of every day, you have your like unique encounter. So Stahl goes into Stahl's loft, Pygmalion goes into his workshop or something, I can't remember. Um, 
Vanessa's ship. Vanessa goes to her ship. Um, and you just get something that makes sense for you, right? So Stell, apparently it's a lot of, lot of health, which is interesting. But some gold to set you up. Um, it looks like in this build, you are either going for like gold or items. Whereas in the current build where enemies give you gold, an item and XP, you don't have to go to as many NPC fights to get the gold you need to buy items. Uh, and you might get items from those NPC fights anyway that you could then sell and turn into more gold uh, if they have a sell price. Um, but in most cases we see, like this NPC for example, has just regular people items. And um, this was the one, is it Divers? Something Diver? Divers Gulch? I can't remember. It would have hovered. You can probably go back and pause the video if you want to see. Um, but this guy you can fight over and over and over. Uh, and you dive to deeper levels and the reward grows for each level that you go down. But obviously back in these days, uh, you were taking permanent damage whenever you, uh, whenever you fought NPCs. So we're seeing poison being applied to us in this case. Uh, do we lose this? That puffer fish is firing very fast. I think we lost. He has six burning on him, but yeah, no, we're done. Did you also lose a life for losing to NPCs? That's kind of crazy if you do. Okay, you don't seem to lose a life to losing to an NPC. You basically just skipped that encounter, which I think is fair. You also don't get healed to fall, though. You get healed to whatever you were last at, maybe. Or maybe you just get healed to, what's that, 20% of your maximum health? And we're going to fight another NPC. I mean, we've got eight gold. We could have bought something. Um, I mean, the day is coming in clutch here, and then we also do that, so yeah. Okay. We, we are able to win this without losing anything. A little bit close for comfort. All right, here's an event uh, that you gain health in. <laughs> I clicked through that. He went through that far too quickly. The cake shop. There you go. Uh, you can either buy a small amount of health or a large amount of health. There's also the Frost Treat Champion. We just saw a, uh, a deep dive on the Frost Treat Champion. So it looks like for five gold, you can buy 50 health. So it's what? 10 gold per... 10 gold per 10? No. Words. One gold per 10 health. There we go. Um... And that allows us to be a bit tankier. Health in general was more... Was at more of a premium back then. Um, in more recent builds, we've seen starting health be quite a bit higher. Not a lot higher, but like 150, 200, something like that. Uh, I still think they're trying to figure out exactly where the sort of starting health needs to sit for you to feel comfortable going for your build without having to invest in health. But also being able to invest in health and feeling like that is a a suitable strategy, right? Because if everyone starts with too much health, if everyone starts with 500 health, then investing in health isn't going to really help you like outweigh your opponents that hard. Um, unless you're getting percent increases all the time. Um, so they need to find like a, a comfortable balance where you know, and some NPCs are dangerous. Um, Dagger wing. 15 damage per item you own. Uh, we don't have many items. Airplane. If your opponent has speed, they lose 5 speed. And then gain altitude, was that? I mean, we could buy it, but we'd have to sell something. And then you gain 3. I don't think it's worth selling bird cake. Although maybe he thinks, like, if he's thinking here that his build is bad. If he doesn't believe in this build, then it's worth gambling, selling bird cage, and going for it. But no, he just calls an end to it. We're going to find another star. I love these little uh, battle animations that play out. Very cool. Alright, so the enemy is doing some sort of... Just straight up damage build. They're not building any type of altitude. They're not, they are inflicting some burning on us, but not much. Uh, in general, their build appears to be not as good as ours. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, 
I haven't seen many of those items. He hovered one very quickly. I should have been faster on the bam on the space bar to, to pause and have a look at it. Um, but we get a bunch more treasures once again. We go from nine to eighteen. Yeah. So this might have been one of the examples. We have we've only seen him pick the middle enemy so far. If he picks a side one, uh, then we need to pay it close attention and see if he still gets nine trophies for a win. Um, right, we're going to Stell's Loft. What was that far right one? Upgrade your lowest base cost item. So there were upgrades in this. Interesting. I have not seen... Oh, this was the shiny fancy system, right. So in this system, I think you had to find specific NPCs to upgrade your items. Uh, and they would just get like a fancier looking border, uh, which I guess is the case now, right? They do get a fancier looking border. Um, but yeah, I went through this in the uh, one of our more recent videos, uh, sort of a retrospective a recap of what's happened throughout the uh, development of the bazaar. So if you're new to this, absolutely go check out that video as well. Um, but the upgrade system for items is probably the single most changed thing in the entirety of the bazaar. It has gone through so many different iterations, and each iteration has gone through so many different like variables. We had the... I mean, we started out life with no leveling system or upgrading system whatsoever. Um, we then moved into an upgrade system for both your character and your items, where you would just go up one level at a time. I think the maximum level was like 30. So that was back in the days of like Vanessa sniper rifle builds, um, where you, like Raynad was trying was trying to get like a sniper rifle to level thirty, so it would do a bajillion damage. Um, it then got removed, and then you got turned into this shiny fancy system, uh, where if you found the right NPC that would sell you a upgrade to your item, then you could turn it into a fancy or shiny. Uh, actually, there's I tell a lie. There was a system in between that where there was, what were they? They were like an artist of some sort, where they would apply uh, an affix or prefix to your item. So they would, like, they would apply the word burning to your item or flaming to your item, right? And it would now deal burn damage. Or they would apply the words graceful and you'd now gain speed or something like that, right? Um, that then turned into the shiny fancy system um, where you would upgrade your item to shiny after finding a vendor. Uh, or an event or something like we saw here. You'd upgrade it to shiny, which would just do more of the same. And then you would upgrade it to fancy, and the fancy gave you two um, two options, two choices uh, to take the item. You know, And it would work kind of like that affix system where like one option would be it now deals burning damage. And the other option would be uh, it goes from being a medium item to a small item, right? Uh, so two completely different paths you could take it down. Uh, so that was the shiny fancy system. Uh, now we appear to have a, a bit of a combination of the two, where if you you can see duplicates in the shop, kind of like you would in any auto battle, right? You'd see duplicates of the same item. So say you see you have a bronze sniper rifle and you see a bronze sniper rifle in the shop, you buy it and it combines with your bronze sniper rifle to turn into a silver sniper rifle. And that just does more of what it did before. It does more damage, shorter cooldown, etc. Um, you can then buy another silver sniper rifle, turn that into a gold, and another gold sniper rifle to turn it into a diamond. Uh, that is the system they seem to have landed on. It is definitely the... I wouldn't say it's not... The, either that or the simple level system would be the easiest to understand. This seems to be like a, a nice balance of the two. Because we still have... The simplicity of just making the item bigger and better um, while there is that element of having to like find the item you know you don't just go to forger at the end of the day and press a button 50 times to level it up uh, you have to go and search for the right merchant to find the right item to get your upgrade um, so I have not been focusing at all on Raynard's gameplay. Uh, so I hope you've been enjoying it in the background. Uh, he hasn't changed up his build at all yet, though. So <laughs> good. that was good of us, I guess. Let's let's randomly jump in at this next item, the Vortex Cannon. Uh, it's a weapon every, 20 sec every 10 seconds, rather, deal 20 damage. This is multicast equal to the number of items the opponent owns. Oh my word. That sounds insane. 
Uh, Raynard sell all of her items and build around that now. <laughs> Multicast equal to the number? He's doing it. Mad lad. I don't blame him. That sounds ridiculous. Every 10 seconds, deal 20 damage per item the enemy owns. This is going to pop off right here. This is against Gweg, one of the old uh, devs. Or the old designers. Let's see how, how hard this goes. Greg does have a bunch of shy. Oh my god, that just deleted his health bar. If that triggers again, it's over. It might be over before that, but yep. Here goes the Vortex Cannon. Pacha. Well, I think it's safe to say that that no longer does that anymore. <laughs> that is insane. I, I, knew, I knew it was strong. It sounded strong. Uh, I didn't see which side he picked. Damn it. But he got 10 that time. So it's. I think it's safe to say that getting a different number of uh, trophies per opponent, uh, depending on whether or not they're, they're picking a different one, or if it's giving more trophies if he defeats them faster or has more health left or whatever. But he got 10 that time and he was getting 9 previously. Maybe it scales per day. Maybe you get more trophies the later on in the run you are. Uh, can we not? No? Okay. As I say, can we not upgrade? Our incredible Vortex Cannon. Maybe Raynard knows it doesn't upgrade very well. Um, we have 10 money. We have a bunch of skills. Just go eating contest maybe? Get more health? No? We're going for more money. Only 4 money though. Wow. Really aren't giving you much these days. The, uh, the new NPCs seem to give a lot more than that. If I remember rightly, you're like, your day, like, three, four NPCs are giving you more than four gold, and an item on top of that, and XP to help your character grow. It's just a really different, like, economy, and they've, they've obviously messed around with the economy of this game a lot. Uh, and by that I mean, like, how many, like, uh, gold-gaining events you need to go to before you can buy some things. Um, which I guess is needed now, because... You now need to get multiple versions of the item to level it up. It's not just go to a vendor and click a button and buy it. Um, you need to search through a bunch of uh, merchants to find the item. Buy multiple copies of each item. The, the cost scales dramatically. We've seen diamond items costing like 48 gold. It's insanity. Um, so... Yeah, it's just interesting to see what they did with the economy uh, and how it's balanced out. I feel like it's in a good place now, but I could be wrong. Maybe it'll have massively changed by the time we get to the closed beta test. We won't recognise the game at all. They've been they've been quietly cooking something, that's for sure. All right, come on, Vortex Cannon. Man, that ice bomb actually cooked. I don't think it's, think it's going to be enough, though. I think we need the Vortex Cannon. No, we don't even need the Vortex Cannon. It's going to trigger first anyway. Bang. That was... I don't want to... Actually, I was going to say this was an excellent pivot from a build that looked like it was kind of reaching the, the apex of what it could achieve into transitioning to this Vortex build. I wouldn't say he's transitioned to a Vortex build. I would just say he bought a Vortex. Uh, and it is doing an incredible amount of damage without any support whatsoever because none of his none of his skills benefit this vortex None of his other items benefit the vortex. I didn't see what ectoplasm did, but it's clearly doing some sort of shielding or healing I can't tell because I'm colorblind um, Unless it's also doing like healing per damage dealt to the enemy or something. I don't know. I Think that was the cultist that we visited here we go, big item person. The de-icing cart costs 8 altitude, which is good for us. Deal 6 burn and unfreeze a frozen item you own. Does he buy that just because he got frozen a bunch in the last fight? Don't do it. Hammer. Every 9 seconds, this weapon tool deals 10 damage per tool or gear you own. When an adjacent tool or gear is used, gain 5 shield. I love these abilities, these, these passive abilities of like... When adjacent item of particular type is used, do this thing. Um, it's going to create some, or it's going to push you towards some very creative builds that you wouldn't necessarily go for, right? Or at least it's going to make you think more. Okay, it's going to do two things. 
First point, creative builds. You might not pick an item that dealt... Say, say there are two weapons, right? There is a sword that deals 10 damage, and there is a hammer that deals, I'm going to say, 8 damage. Right? Not even 9, just does less. They're both the same size, they're both the same cost. You'd always buy the sword. But if you had this hammer, and the mallet, let's say, deals 8 damage, you're going to buy the mallet. Because every time that triggers, you get 5 shield. That's now worth 13 life, whereas the sword is worth 10. So it's going to create those interesting uh, interactions. What it's also going to do is make you think about where you're placing things on the board. And this is one thing I love about what the bazaar seems to be doing. Raynad's already doing, doing it this run. He has a skill that says your right, uh, if your rightmost item is a vehicle, deal burn damage when it triggers, right? So he has to put his drone in that rightmost slot. If he now bought this hammer, he would feel like, to get the most out of it, he would have to put this hammer between two tools or gears. So now he's got two things that he needs to place in certain places. If he has another one, then his board starts to look really tricky. How exactly does he split up his items? Like, maybe he has to forego that skill. Maybe he needs to have the hammer on the right for, for whatever reason, you know. I just think it's, it's a really interesting level of depth to a game that people are saying that doesn't have enough depth. Uh, Daggerwing, we've already seen, does about damage per item you own. We don't have space for it because we've got Vortex. Don't buy it. Don't sell Vortex. He's selling Vortex. Mad lad. I feel like Vortex just outdid this in terms of damage. It was 20 damage per item the enemy owns, which is a lot. All right. When's JJ? There's a couple of things here. I'll go through Tethers first. Tethers. Plus 4 altitude every 6 seconds, gain 4 strength. That's nice. We want a lot of items, so strength is a good thing. I don't think we care too much about taking off and... Like, we don't really interact too much with altitude still. Altitude, the only thing we have with altitude is our drone. The other thing I want to talk about, when I hit play again, the rightmost item is animated right in front of you. I would love to see this. I would love to see, like... If you own animated versions of cards in your, like, library or whatever, if you encounter them in the wild, I would love to see them animated. Or maybe, maybe just tease us, and if we see a card in the wild, like if JJ has a card, it's animated. If we buy it and we don't have the animated version, it's not animated. I would also love to see, third point here, when we're fighting enemies, I would love to see their cosmetics on their cards. If they have, like, some fancy mega cosmetic that I've never seen before, let me see it when I fight their ghost, or fight their whatever, and then let other people see mine. Not only will that A, be cool as heck, B, allow players to feel like they're showing off a little bit, because every, all players love to do that in competitive games, but three, or C, I don't, I don't remember if I was using numbers or letters, that would help the game as well, because people would see cool cosmetics that they want to own, and then they would go and spend that money and buy those cosmetics. So, I just hope that's a thing. Anyway, look at the cool animated art. You love to see it. It's a weather machine. It's a vehicle and a weapon. Every 14 seconds deals 50 damage, 6 burn, and 2 freeze. Uh, applies freeze to all small items on both sides. Do we want that? It does burn. We like burn. It does 50 damage. We like damage. It is a vehicle. I can't remember if our skill required vehicles or drones. I think it was drones. So it doesn't help with that. But freezing all small items? We just picked up this big ship. This big ship, Deathwing or whatever it's called. I think it's called Deathwing, right? Named after the uh, <laughs> World of Warcraft. Uh, or well, I guess Hearthstone card. Um, it... It, want, uh, it wants us to, wait, it deals damage per item we own, so if we have lots of small items, it's worth more. The weather machine is a large item, and it freezes all small items. So those two don't really have synergy, but I would, I would maybe like to see him swap to the weather machine. I do not believe in this big blimp, this death wing. Running hot. Yeah, it is a vehicle. Okay, that's perfect then. Sell the drone. It is shiny, but sell the drone. And then last but not least, we have Toolbox, which is a tools. <laughs> Every second, seven seconds, you get 20 shield. At the start of the day, your weapons gain four damage permanently. 
It's a fun one to have early. We have the money for, for any of it as well. I would love him to just sell Deathwing and pick up the, the weather machine. And then put weather... Uh, part of me wants to put weather machine in the brightmost slot. Yes, do it. Wait, he's doing it with tethers? Alright, okay. So we're going all in. He's already got a shiny, uh, like, gyro battle drone thing, whatever. Um, so I can see why he's going in on it. Right, then we have a rocket drone, which is another weapon vehicle drone that has ammo. Every six seconds, gain five altitude, deal five damage. Don't think that's for us because we've just fixed our taking off and selling down problem. Um, ammo, by the way, every time it triggers, you lose one. So this will trigger five times and then it'll stop triggering. We also have, oh, he's considering it, uh, the Gosma, which is a vehicle. Every 10 seconds gain shield equal to 10 times the day count. That's a lot of shielding. And the multiple every 10 seconds gain 18 shield. And when you land, increase this item shielding by two. It doesn't say permanently. I would like to know if it does do it permanently. If it was permanent, that'd be insane. But I will also think buy it because we want... He, he's now committed a little bit, at least, into a takeoff landing build, right? You've committed two of your items to gaining and losing altitude so that you can take off and land. Yes, thank you. I'm going to say, you better had. Uh, we heal. Interestingly, you don't heal to full. You heal 100 health. So he does it twice here. And when you heal, it rerolls. So it's... I mean, I'm not sure as to why there are two options. You, you may as well just click heal each time, but hey ho. Uh, we got a firebomb. It's gonna do some damage. We went middle, god damn it. Okay, so I have skipped ahead just a little bit because right now kind of sticks to this build for a while now. Uh, but we are about to see him change things up. Now it's been performing pretty well. We, we continue to guide the Weeper. We get our shiny ectoplasm. And then I believe we go to JJ. Or are we fighting the boy girl? Okay. No, cake shot. It's very soon. Oh, it's Forger. Pilot swings. He doesn't want. Where is it? There it is. The big radar dish thing. The radar dome, which is an appliance. You gain regeneration equal to your altitude. At the start of the fight, gain six altitude. He is going to immediately swap to an altitude gaining build uh, which means you're not going to land anymore so multi-tool that can go we get the radar dish or dome or whatever it's called we're still triggering our thing uh, and we are going to go into a hard altitude build at this point uh, I'll let this battle play out and then we'll skip ahead a little bit more until the next item pickup and uh, see how he develops this one this battle also, against the jewels. I'm going to be a jewels main as soon as she's out. Look how colourful that board is, by the way. Just fantastic. I'm colourblind, and it's, it's colourful even to me. Um, you can see with, with, with the regen train is starting. And it's just equal to our altitude. We don't necessarily have to trigger anything. We just need our altitude to be high. Although, why is it not... Or do we gain altitude when it triggers? So we do need a trigger. We also just outlasted them. Our shiny act pleasant and shiny uh, little battle drone. Doing work. Okay, so we're going to poll. Poll sells big items. I'm going to pause here. This is a... Uh, I, I misspoke earlier. We have the, the upgrade system in this, uh, this version of the upgrade system. Also allowed you to combine cards if you could find them. Uh, so kind of like the, the current system does. So we go to Pole, knowing the Pole sells big items. We want on the radar though, and we found one. We've also found a lightning rod, which for uh, every every 40 seconds absorbs all damage that we dealt over the next five seconds. And at the start of the fight, charge this uh, 37 seconds. So they've, they've gone back to charge, by the way. Charge is what it's called again. Um, so at the start of the fight, there are three seconds, then absorbs all damage, and then it has a 40 second timer. Uh, and it has the cool like, uh, animated card effect, although I feel like that could be better. It just kind of wobbles at the moment. 
Uh, but we get our second radar dome. We apply it. Now it's shiny. Shiny radar dome. At the start of the fight, gain 10. Uh, and still gain regen equal to your altitude every 14 seconds. So we're just gaining more altitude to start. I miss. I, I was wrong as well. We actually pick up the observatory here instead of the... Uh, the lightning rod. We're finally selling our drone. Really? I guess so. I guess we're never... Oh, and selling that. Oh no, he does buy it. Okay. I thought I was going crazy. What's the play here? This is a massive, massive pivot. And I don't know if this will happen as much in the new version. Because in the new version, it seems to be a lot easier to uh, buy into your cards. Um, we see a lot more silvers and golds and diamond cards going around, which means you've invested a lot into that particular build. And while you can sell it, I think it's going to be harder to pivot than it was here necessarily. Um, but this feels really scary. Oh, that looks scary. Uh, <laughs> but this is a massive pivot. Forget, don't, don't forget, he was running a... He's run multiple builds. We had the Vortex Cannon for a while. We had the uh, battle drone for the entire time that was kind of mostly carrying just off of consistent damage uh, and now we're hard pivoting into some sort of like outlasting survivable tanky build so we're healing up to full until he sees the balloon tower i remember this patch now because we watched a bunch of these games that reynard played and i'm pretty sure he picked the balloon tower in every single style game which makes sense, right? The Balloon Tower, it's a weapon appliance. I'm not sure why it's a weapon. Every 8 seconds, gain altitude. Now I know why it's a weapon. When you gain altitude, deal damage equal to your current altitude. So, he picks up the Radar Dome knowing that Balloon Tower is out there. Knowing that a stealth build you can go for is altitude gain. Uh, and that's going to be the set, a thing going into the Bazaar the same way it is going to into any auto battler, where... You know some of the builds out there. You have an idea as to what you might go for. And if you find a key piece of that build, it isn't... You, you, can, you can go for it, right? What I, what I was about to interject myself for saying, the Bazaar doesn't, isn't set up for you to be able to force a build. You're not going to be able to click fell and just go for a max altitude build. Because you might not get Balloon Tower. You might not get Radar Dome. And then your max altitude is doing what? You're, you've got loads of altitude, but you've got like a battle drone alongside it and you're just kind of hoping that it survives long enough. You need to have the knowledge about the game to spot things to, as Raynad has in this case, pivot into when you see those key components of a better build. If you're running a, a sort of hodgepodge mash of things, right? Or you just go with the flow from day one and try to weasel your way into a strong build with some of the first things you find. Uh, and I think that's gonna be a lot of the joy in the bazaar is pivoting into meta builds and trying to maximize the value out of your early days and the things you find during those days and make those builds work. Uh, and I think there's I think there's space for both of them. I just went on that massive round, so he's not gonna buy it now, but I remember it being OP. Is he just gonna sell the lightning rod? Surely you just sell Everything but the shiny ectoplasm. Nope. I guess we are. We're not going for an outlasting build anymore, but it would have been nice during this transitionary stage where you don't really have that much going for you. Alright, we fight Steven on the left. And now we're just a maximum altitude build. All we care about is getting that altitude number, which is at 10, up as high as it can go. Uh, and every time we trigger... The Balloon Tower is going to go up by 8, and we'll deal that much damage. I, yeah, I'm sure we're going to lose this one horribly. I mean, we're, we're up against a max altitude build here, look. And he's got so much damage on the board. He's got 39 altitude, so many things, because he would have found it earlier. He may have found it from day one. You know, find an item that worked. So, we move into day 8. What's the only sensible thing to do? Sell everything. Sell it all. We are going all in. <laughs> we are upgrading our balloon tower so that it's shiny, uh, which gave it more altitude. So it's 12 instead of eight now. 
And then we're just going to try and buy some stuff that makes sense. We have sirens that days when you do vehicles. We have something that costs us altitude. We really don't want that. And then channel. Gain 6 health every 3 seconds. This doesn't charge, but begins channeling once you reach 10 altitude. That's pretty good. We immediately reach 10 altitude. Um, channeling? I don't think I've seen channeling in a long time. I wonder if that still exists. It It's kind of awkward to get your head around. Like it... Like it does work like any normal item. I feel like they probably just reworded it. Like this doesn't start charging until you reach 10 altitude or something like that. We can't say charging anymore because charge is to like advance for a number of seconds. Actually, maybe you can say charging, right? Maybe that's why they call it charge. Because we say charging. We say, we say an item is charging. A card is charging. Uh, so why would you call it advance? You're advancing the charge. We'll just say charge then. How many times did I say charge in the last 10 seconds? Let me know in the comments. All right, we pick up a rocket drone and we go to the fates because we are down to our last health, which is something that happened back then. Uh, we can choose some very powerful things, get maximum options for every day event, upgrade the leftmost item or whatever this guy on the right does. We're upgrading our leftmost item. We're going for the radar zone. And here we go. Here's the, here's the old fancy version of things. We have mystical on the left, which would, uh, what's mystical doing? Oh, advance adjacent items by 10 seconds when that triggers. Damn. That's kind of crazy. And then turbo, it's just much faster. Which I think we might go for. Yeah. Adjacent item advancing by 10 seconds is pretty strong because we can advance our adjacent items that are giving us altitude so that we get more regen. But it will have triggered by that point anyway, so... Actually, he has a great point here as well. All of his skills are for his old build. This is one thing he hasn't pivoted yet. So we've got eject, eject. Next time you would lose a heart, destroy this instead. That could be pretty useful. Custom spoilers when you buy a vehicle, we don't care. Turbocharge, first time you use an item in a fight, use it again. That could be incredibly strong if we sold most of our other items. Pinwheel wouldn't count towards it. Maybe we sell rocket drone, pick up turbocharger, and then... I think Balloon Tower triggers first, so it would be Balloon Tower. I don't know what the cooldown of Rocket Drone is. Maybe it's longer. When you burn the opponent, gain 3 altitude. Perfect. We just need altitude. We do have a vehicle as well. So yeah, we get rid of that one, I think. So we're at least doing that once. There you go, we hovered it for like half a second. A vehicle that burns. How is that not perfect? He wants the grenade. Every 4.9 seconds. Oh, it's got one ammo though. Is that not going to trigger your turbocharge? I feel like that triggers turbocharge. We'll find out, I guess. And he finds another balloon tower. So we get the double... He gets the double fancy. So play to Balloon Tower. Also gain shield. Or Tempered Balloon Tower. Uh, gain 12 altitude. Then increase this gain by 4. Interesting. So it scales. I think we just go with that, right? Then our ceiling is a lot higher. You could just go... Yeah, he's just going to go plate it and hope that he can survive, I guess. We did die pretty early, and I guess... Mm -hmm. Nah, I still would have liked the... <laughs> I would have liked the infinite ceiling. The, the scaling. Alright, it's a Steven Pygmalion build this time. A Lion's Cane dealing 288 damage. We instantly dealt damage, by the way. Oh, it's because when we gain altitude, incredible, yeah. When we gain, whenever we gain altitude, we deal that our uh, altitude as damage, don't we? Is that our altitude as damage? Yeah, it must be. So every time we burn, 
Because when we burn, we gain that much altitude. That's incredible. That I that didn't re I, I didn't realize that until now. But that skill item combo is insane. And I feel like skill item combos kind of have to be like at the forefront of what's creating crazy builds. Like I, obviously, item combos are a thing. But skills just seem so much more powerful. Like when you burn or when the enemy burns, gain that much altitude. That can that could help so many builds. Not just this one. Like you could have a like a single burning item. Maybe a burning item that deals burn damage every time you land, right? Have a bunch of altitude like losing items. Uh, and then maybe like a single burning item, like this flash grenade that he has. That would trigger the first burn, you'd gain altitude. Then you trigger your burning item, which loses altitude, or costs altitude to use, then burns the enemy. Then your skill triggers, you gain altitude, and then it can trigger again, right? That is a big laser. I remember seeing this laser card for the first time, thinking like, some cool art. The bazaar has some, uh, some cool things it can do. This has 8,000 health. What can we do to it? Can we do anything to it? This thing's just constantly... Okay. I was like, that's just channeling and doing a ton of damage to us. What the hell? Yeah, it's doing it again. I do remember it being this, like, channeled effect. We do have 180 regeneration, though. <laughs> And I think it's doing 209 damage every second while it channels. And we have more regeneration than it does damage. So they might be perma-freezing our ability to gain more altitude. So we're not going any higher than 65. I don't know why our regeneration is going to be even higher. I guess it's triggering, right? Giving us more regen. So we are just going to outlast it in the sandstorm. Unless the sandstorm starts dealing 600 damage a second. It's basically going to come down to whether or not he dies first, or whether or not the sandstorm deals a full amount of HP in a single shot first. Which is crazy. Also, how is it only freezing that one item? It must be a card that specifically freezes, like, only weapons or something. It's looking spooky, but I think we got it, yeah. Damn, that, that is 635. We had more regeneration than we had life. That is insane. And they gave us the Eclipse, which is what? Weapon vehicle, advance for other items by 10 seconds when you use another item, deal 50 damage. I'm not sure that's worth getting. But maybe Rayna thinks otherwise. It is vehicle, so it will trigger our burning. Or well, the pile of money. Pile of money. I agree. I like that you have the option, especially nowadays, right? Because now we, we get gold and the item from enemies. Well, an item from enemies. Uh, there is a chance you can absolutely pop off. Uh, charge adjacent items, two seconds. That sounds great. Three seconds stays. Charge left item by one second. Yeah, they're both good. Um, but yeah, now you can get those items from... NPCs, uh, at least we assume so, right? Because the ones we have seen have the uh, have that third like like gift you get for beating them. You get the gold, you get the what we think is XP, and you get what we believe is one of their items. Um, so being able to get those cool things from them, oh, here's the genie with the golden ticket and whatever. Uh, sell this to a shop to take everything in the shop and get new offerings. Uh, that's kind of crazy because you would. I have to sell your entire board to have it. Another good thing about the new build is that wouldn't happen because you have some sort of storage section where you can hold all your things. <laughs> uh, he wants the altimeter, does he? Gain, uh, gain to altitude, yeah. Okay. And when you take off gain five speed. That's just a, a, just a good, flat good item. We could have upgraded our rocket drone, but we couldn't have because we didn't have the money. And we did need to heal. All right. Into day 10 we go. 
This is just casting my mind back. Such a different build than we started with. <laughs> we started with an altitude takeoff land build, pivoted into like a burning build, and have landed on landed pun not intended on an altitude gain build that is broken busted. This really was the patch for pivoting. <laughs> of course, now, because of the way that the scaling works, you have to find, to max out like he has, you have to find four of every item, because there is a diamond tier. This this was a three tier system, we're now in a four tier system. And that four tier system works very much the same way that um, other auto battlers do, where to get a silver version of an item, you realistically need two bronze versions of an item. Now you can find silver versions in the shop, so it's not quite that auto battle like difficulty of leveling your items, um, but you've got to assume that it's rarer to find silver items in the shop. So to get that next upgrade is going to be a little bit harder. You're going to have to be like a higher level or whatever it takes, you know? Um, Wow, your opponent's non-weapon items charge slower. That seems unfun. We don't have many weapons. I mean, we have our altitude gain, which is the main thing. Our regen, our radar dome is going to be the thing that takes ages to trigger. But it looks like we're fine. We've got the whole when we burn. Yeah, bang, bang. It's a, it's a, it was a good item. I assume it's not the same. <laughs> and now we can get opponents non-weapon item charge 50% slower, which just seems nuts. We got rid of the burn. Interesting. That was a quick altitude gainer, altitude gainer, but I guess we are swapping it for effectively permanent days on opponent uh, weapons, right? Days back then was a slow. Applied to all of their stuff. I mean, look how slow those things are charging. They're already large items. I'm pretty sure they charge slowly. Uh, I also am pretty sure at least one of these items, if not two of them, burn, which is going to help our build even more. Maybe even three, because that catapult looks like it's burning as well. Ah, uh, yeah, we are doing. A, they're doing a lot of burn to us, which means we're doing a lot of altitude damage to them. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Halfway through day ten. Gain a pot of money. I feel like the play here is probably just gain money unless you see a merchant that you really want. And then spend big at the end. Unless you spot, I guess, like that was an event that gave you speed. Right, because at the moment he's having to swap out stuff if he really wants something. Uh, energy, energy ring prowess. When you gain this, upgrade a random shiny item you own. Okay. Uh, does he have any shinies? I don't think he does. So I boom, while you have 40 or more speed, your weapons deal five da plus five damage and have piercing. I assume piercing goes through armor? That's interesting, we've not seen that. I don't think ever since. Well, all your machine, when you use a gear or tool, charge the item to its right. I feel like he just takes the skip here. No? Does he have a shiny item? No. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, I would like to see him just fight some bosses, head to Forger at the end of the day, and then just roll for the perfect one slot item. But what do I know? Alright, well this is a very, very, very tanky enemy. And all of its items are very slowed. So I will see you in a second when Raynan does a thing. And he bought some cake and fought two other monsters and here we are. Uh, end of the day, he got a bunch of a bunch of money and now we're at Forger. Um, so he's got a little bit more help than he did. That was a good thing. Uh, and now we're just re-rolling for the perfect last item. That's costing altitude. We don't want it. That does burn. We don't hate it. But it's not really going to make the difference. Destroy opponent's shields. We don't care. Another ultimator. Is it really worth the shiny? It depends what the shiny does. If the shiny is just more altitude, more fast, much better. Um, 
if the shiny is an increased take off event, we don't care about taking off. We're only doing that once. So he's going to go for it. What does it do now? Okay, it is much faster altitude gain. What, 3.3 seconds over instead of 4, and the takeoff is a bit better, but that's fine. I, I like the 3.3 seconds gain of altitude, because then every 3.3 seconds we're dealing damage to the enemy. Alright, we're going into a Jules fight. This Jules has the Reaper's Scythe, which I'm pretty sure did like 33% of their max health as damage or something. Um, which you got from fighting a specific enemy. But it's not being it's not able to outlast. That that supercharged alt meter was definitely the play. Bang, 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 bang. Ran and wins day 10. And there you have it, some stealth gameplay. Hopefully, we'll have some updated gameplay here very, very shortly, as October is just around the corner and closed beta will be out. And I'll see you there for that.